can draw the sun or the stars and the moon. I can draw anything. How about you? Ready, set, draw! Hi, I'm Paul Ozolinski. I'm the author of some children's books and the illustrator of a whole lot more. And today, I'm going to talk to you about drawing cats. Now, they say that you're either a dog person or a cat person, and I'm definitely a dog person, which meant that when I was growing up, I could not draw cats. Every time I tried to draw a cat, it looked like a dog. Let me show you. It would have the ears of a cat, and I think the eyes of a cat, and the mouth of a cat, Boom, looks like a dog to me. Well, I spent a lot of time thinking about cats that way, and um, I've made a lot of books that have cats in them. Let me show you a few. The Maid and the Mouse and the Odd-Shaped House was an old book about this couple of friends who live in this funny-shaped house. It's a pentagon, a five-sided shape, and it's really that funny shape because when they put some walls and windows and chimneys in, you can see that the house has become a cat. It's not a very realistic cat. It doesn't look like a photograph, but it does look kind of like a cat. Okay, the story of Mrs. Lovewright and Perlis, her cat, is all about a cat. This is not a very realistic cat. It's a little bit cartoony uh, because it should be kind of funny. It should look the way cats look. Poor Mrs. Lovewright. In Rapunzel, it's a very realistic cat. This is Rapunzel's pet cat. Now, even though I'm a dog person, our family had a cat here. The cat was named Skimby, and I put Skimby right in the book. And this cat looks exactly the way Skimby looked. And a lot of people know the wheels on the bus, and there are a lot of things to look at in this book, and one of them involves a cat. And here it is, mother cat and its baby kittens hiding in a box. This man says, wait, you forgot this. Meow. So I guess you saw that with all these books, they looked really different from each other and the cats looked very different too. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to make a cat. One that's simple and not at all real, like the maid and the mouse in the odd shaped house, and the other more complicated, like in Rapunzel and much more realistic. Ready, set, draw. You're gonna need a pencil or something to make marks with and a piece of paper or something to make the marks on. So we'll start with the shape of the house that the maid and the mouse lived in. It was a pentagon, a five-sided shape like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then they divided it up into rooms with a line going straight across just above the level of the points and another line that went from top to bottom but our line won't go quite all the way to the bottom. It will stop first and branch off to the two sides. And they put windows in their house, two round windows to see out. And then they needed chimneys to let out the smoke. Their chimneys were rectangles, but I'm gonna make triangle chimneys because this really is more of a cat. One, two. And it's almost done. Where the lines cross, we will make a triangle coming down like that with a little nostril inside of each one. And then we can make whiskers coming out and a neck coming down. And now the only thing left is to decide where this cat is going to be looking. Will it be looking off to the right? Or will it be looking up at the ceiling? Now I think it's going to be just looking straight at us. Hello, cat. And that is the very simple cat. And now we'll try to draw the much more realistic cat. To make a cat facing you that looks realistic, there are even a lot of different ways it could look. For instance, a cat could be looking at you like this, or like this, or like that. 
just a little bit up or a little bit down. The differences are subtle. That means they may be hard to think about, but when you see it, they look very different. A cat could be looking right at you and it could be shaped something like this. Or it could be looking right at you, but you would see more the top of its head and it would be shaped like this. So you can see they're very different. I'm going to show you how to do a cat that looks more like this one. Well, I'm going to start out by making some light lines so that I can put things in the right places. And you may not be able to see them very well, but they're here. These two light lines that I'm making are just going to be our guides for the nose that I'm making. A pair of lines I'm going to draw a line going straight across with a bump in it. And that is the top of the nose. And instead of just a regular triangle coming down, I'm gonna draw two round sort of ball shapes. These are the cheeks and they squeeze the nose in between and the nostrils are nested on the sides of the cheeks like this. And there's a little line down the middle and that's a pretty good cat nose. Now I'm going to find where to put the eyes. I look at the height of this cheek and go about that much higher up and that is where the eyes will go. I'll draw a thin line straight across. The thin line will be a guide so I know where to put the eyes. And on this line I'll take one nose width and move one width of nose out to find where the first eye goes and one width of nose out on the other side to put the second eye. And that will be where the eye is centered. Now I'm going to do the special thing that makes it look like a cat, the real not dog look. I discovered this not so long ago. The, the cat has an eyebrow, the top of the eye, that starts at the top of the circle and makes a curve and goes down and points right at the edge of the nose like that. And on the other side, it does the same thing. It goes straight across and then it curves down and points right down at the edge of the nose. And these lines keep going out straight sideways in both directions, pointing right at each other. And at the outer corner of the eye, another lower lid comes down, straight down, follows the circle of the eye, and keeps going straight in and straight across toward the other eye. And those are, those are two very distinct marks on the cat's eyes. Now we'll continue the cheeks a little bit because the cheeks at the bottom are the mouth, but then they fade out a little bit and they come up pointing straight toward the eye. For the ears, I'm going to make some more thin lines going up again from the inside of the eye and another one going out from the top of the eye. And remember these thin lines, which you might not even be able to see, these are guides for where our uh, ears are going to be. Starting about another eye width over and going up and down and then it ends where it meets that line. This starts at the line and goes up and comes down to our thin guideline here. And then we connect the ears at the top with a line that goes straight across. Now the real ear of a cat comes a little bit in front of the top edge of the head. So we'll continue the line a little bit lower like this. And 
then from here to here, from corner to corner, it's a furry line and the inside of the ear is filled with hairs that come from this edge and point to that edge. So we'll put hair in on both sides, the line going across from edge to edge of the ear. Now we can decide where the cat is going to be looking. It will look straight at us again. I'll erase those guide marks I made earlier. And we'll put pupils in the eyes. When there's a lot of light, cat's pupils get very small and they look like this, little straight lines, little slits. When there's less light, the pupils get bigger and bigger, just like in your own eyes, and they turn into big circles. I like the big circles because it makes the cat look more interested in you, don't you think? There's still a few more things to do. I want to put in the whiskers. There are lines going straight across. If, if the cat is looking right at you, it goes straight across. If the cat's looking a little bit down, it curves up. If the cat's looking up, it curves down. And these, these lines are the places where the whiskers come out. And the whiskers go way out and a little down and forward like this. Let's do the kitty's bottom jaw. It's another curve like that. And maybe we'll darken where the lip goes here. Now this is maybe the hardest part and I left it for last because of that. So pay attention. It's the line that goes all the way from ear to ear under the jaw. It's hard because there isn't really a line like that. There's more than one edge to the bottom of a cat's face. It's not one simple line that comes down and forms the bottom of the face like you would see on a person. It could almost not be there at all. You could have the fur of the cat going straight into the neck like this. But there is a line that comes softly down under the jaw, and I'm gonna draw it softly. And softly means just a lot of little marks. I'm going to erase this line of the ear that I just drew too far out to the side. You see, you can make changes and adjustments to the drawing as it goes. In fact, you should, if you don't like it, make changes. What I didn't do yet was to show even another line coming down from the ear, another edge. It's not exactly the bottom of the head, but it is an edge and it is the edge of the cheekbone. And it's a very prominent, visible thing on a real cat. It comes out under the eyes, follows the curve of the eyes, and almost meets these round cheeks coming up. It's beginning to look pretty much like a real cat, isn't it? There are just a few more things that we could do to make it look even more like a cat. For instance, markings on the fur. A lot of cats, not all, but most of them, have a little line coming down over each eye like this. Lions have it too, by the way. And a line in the middle. It's just a marking that cats have. Another one is a line that starts at the outer edge of the, the eye and comes down like that. Usually cats have white fur on their undersides and darker parts on the top. So the bottom of the jaw and the face is white, but the top could be dark, and the nose could be dark. And I could draw some little shadows underneath the head, 
so it stands out more. And I could darken the inside of the ear because light doesn't get in there. And see how I have the pencil turned sideways and I'm rubbing it and that makes shading happen. So here we have a pretty realistic looking cat. I hope you could follow along and draw a realistic looking cat of your own, or you could just draw the first one, which is silly and simple, but they both look like cats. I would love to see your drawings. Please share them with us using the hashtag ReadySetDraw. I can't wait to see them. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.